And everybody got a flyer today. Everybody got a uh, bulletin, right? So you all pull out that bulletin. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the scriptures. And obviously what we're talking about today is traditions. So you all bring that thing out. And what we're going to do is we're going to split the congregation in the middle. We got the left side, we got the right side, we got the front side, and we got the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to start over here in the front. I need a volunteer from the front left to read me that first verse, and I'm going to ask you what it means, all right? So who wants to read that first verse? I see you. I, hand it off to your husband. That, <laughs> all right, you got it. Go ahead. What does it mean? <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, the Pew Bible is, is an old King James, and I'm an old King James guy too. But all it means is, hey, look, you are not redeemed by your tradition. You are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what you're redeemed by, not what you, you, know, what you practice. So in the back, now I know I've probably scared some folks, but give me somebody in the back who's going to read that one. Jeremy, please. Okay, what does it mean, Jeremy? Same, court, same sort of stuff. People holding on to their tradition and not taking the Lord's tradition, but holding on to our manly traditions is not going to save us. He says we, uh, we make the Lord, the word of the Lord in none effect through our tradition. We make it ineffective just by practicing our traditions for his traditions. Somebody on the right-hand side over here. Give me that next one, 2 Thessalonians. Right side on the back, anybody? Anybody? And there's no, there's no wrong answers on this. Uh, we're over here on the right hand side. Yes, ma'am. What does it mean? Well, in this one, we had two that said, hey, don't cling to those old, man, old earthly traditions. But in this verse, this verse says there are some traditions that are good. The ones that come from the word of the Lord and the ones that come from his epistle. We can cling to those things. And those things, uh, you know, those things will comfort your heart and establish in every good word and work. And then finally, that last one from Proverbs up front. What do we, somebody got a, a volunteer for it. I see a guy in a tie that wants to read this thing. Uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What does it mean? Keep the child the right ways, and they will continue to walk straight line. There you go. There we go. So today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about traditions. Okay, we're going to talk about those traditions as parents that we teach our children. You know, whether we uh, have those children under our houses for 18 years or more in some cases or whether or not we have those guys for just a short period of time in the summer and in the winter or in, on a weekend or something like that. We make conscious decisions as parents and as members of the church what traditions that we teach our children every time that we spend time with them. And we have to make a deliberate, deliberate uh, decision on that. Now, the thing about it is Hank and Charlie will both tell you that when they write sermons, in most of the cases they're pointing a the finger at themselves or it's written for them. I find that to be the same case. You know, in this, this might be a lesson for you, but it is a confession for me, okay? And so that's where, that's the framework that I'm coming from. Now my mother would tell you that traditions, traditions are like an addict to, the, to a culture, 
And so every generation must go into that attic and they must sort through those traditions and find out those, those precious heirlooms that they're going to pass on to the next generation and that rubbish and trash that they're going to get out on the side of the road or go to a rummage sale or go to eBay as quickly as possible. Okay? And so, uh, and, and so we make those conscious decisions. Um, now that being said, when my daughter comes to see me and I spend time with my daughter like I did for Christmas, I think about the things that I want to pass on to her. Uh, those traditions that I want to pass on to her. One of the things that I um, do with my daughter is I want her to understand and know the Bible. And so when I Skype with her every Sunday and we get on the, um, Skype together, we read through the Bible and we read through a little book called Pilgrim's Progress. And Pilgrim's Progress is from the 17th century and it's a, from a guy named John Bunyan. And what it is is a Christian allegory. And what it is is a man named Christian who lives in the city of destruction that's going to be destroyed. He's got a burden on his back, which is his sin. And he is trying to find a way to get rid of that sin, get to the wicked gate, and he goes on to, to the heavenly kingdom. And along that way, he meets people called obstinate. He meets people called pliable. He meets people called worldly wise man and talkative and evangelist and faithful. All these different people. Um, and what that, that book, little book does is Bunyan put in all the verses in which that, that little story is based off of. So as we read through it, my daughter will find the verses and we'll get in the Bible and we'll, we'll go with it. So we'll be in Psalms, we'll be in Proverbs, we'll be in 1 Peter, we'll be in Thessalonians, we'll be in Revelation, we'll be in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We'll be all over that Bible and it makes her jump from place to place. It makes her learn the books of the Bible along with the tenets of the Christian faith. Now, it is written in that old English kind of style, and she finds it a little burden, burdensome, and she doesn't find it as much fun as I do, but she's going to enjoy it when she gets of age, right? Now, another thing that um, I try to teach my daughter is my daughter likes to ride horses, or my, my family likes to ride horses, and so we have taught her to ride since she could sit in that saddle. So uh, she likes to ride, and of this, this uh, Christmas, she was of age, and we had an, a, a horse of temperament in which that she could ride outside the round ring. And that means that she could actually get out with just the horse and her reins and ride all over the countryside with us riding with her. And she really enjoys that. That's another one of those, those traditions that we try to teach her. Now, one of the things I wanted to teach her, and she's 12 years old, I wanted to teach her how a young gentleman should treat her when she goes on a date. Amen. And so when I took my daughter, I took my daughter out on the first, her first daughter-daddy date at Christmas. All right? And uh, I, I wanted her to see that. She's 12 years old, and I know those, that time is coming. So I, uh, so I did the things that you're supposed to do for a date. I got my car all clean, and I got my flowers for her, and I got my clothes, and I got a restaurant reservation, all those kinds of things ready for my daughter. And then I needed to go and take her shopping because uh, we need to find her a dress that she could wear, right? So I took her shopping. Now, do, what do you, how much experience do you think a 40-year-old infantryman has at buying a 12-year-old, a 12-year-old girl's dress? I probably have, you're right, I have none, I have none. So I was prepared, man, I was prepared for torture. I was prepared to go in there and sit for four hours and go through every dress in the store and move from store to store. And man, whew, I went in the first store and she said, I like that one. And I said, well, let's get a few more. And so we picked out, you know, she got a coral dress and she wanted, we got a blue one and a red one and a green one. I said, all right, go in the, in the room and go dress and then come back and tell me about it. So she came out 10 minutes later and said, I got my one, I'm ready to go. I said, 10 minutes? This is the best time, best shopping with a woman I have ever experienced. <laughs> I mean, I know that time is coming, but right now, I mean, I've got a few years and 10 minutes, 20 minutes tops, I was out of that store and I was thankful. So then, you know, because of the horseback riding, she needs, we need to get her some cowboy boots. Now, my, my daughter is 12 years old, and she has a woman's 11 foot. She, big old foot. She was wearing my dad's cowboy boots to ride horses in. So, you know, I had the, probably the most eclectic, uh, wide variety of shopping that you have ever seen. I went to go buy a 12-year-old dress, 12-year-old girl's dress, and I bought a pair of cowboy boots within 30 minutes. And within an hour, I was home. All right, so... I took her home and we went to my father's and I dropped her off with my dad to get ready for the date and then I came back to get ready myself. And I got all ready and I went to go pick her up and we went out and we had a great time. You know, we had dinner and we talked and I was like, man, my daughter is growing up on me. She is going to be gone out of my nest. And I said, well, what do you want for uh, dessert? She said, uh, ice cream cone. And I said, well, I got a few more years because the, the only place to get that is at Baskin Robbins. So we went to Baskin Robbins. 
enjoyed it, went and took her home, and I had her by, home by 8, which I impressed upon her. That is going to be her curfew up until she's 20 years old. <laughs> you know, and when she comes home from dates, it is, she is expected to be home by 8 o'clock. So I dropped her off. I said, okay, now tomorrow morning we're going to go to church with grandmother and then we'll go to church with Pa. I'm going to go to church with grandmother at 8.30 and we'll go to church with Pa at 11. So I went home and I went to bed. Now, being in the Army, uh, the good thing about being in the Army is you have your uniforms, right? I don't have to worry one bit about uh, what I put on to go to work because it's the same thing day after day. Army gives me a dress uniform. Army gives me a hot weather, cold weather uniform, all that kind of stuff. And so really, I don't have what I would call civilian clothes. We call them civilian clothes. So I don't have a whole lot of casual civilian clothes. I have this suit that you see, which I have only worn primarily for a visual aid for y'all for today. <laughs> and I got like a blazer, and that's about it. And, this is, and I only wear this thing, when I, it, when I go to formal events, I wear my, uni my dress uniform. So this thing is what I call my funeral suit, because I only wear it at funerals. I wear it to church sometimes, and then I wear it to funerals. So I put on my funeral suit. And when I put on my funeral suit, man, I would, whoo, that's my tradition. My dad said, hey, you always got to be dressed up to go to church. You need to be looking fine. You need to be looking nice. So I put on my funeral suit. I got out my lint roller. I rolled my arms. I rolled my suit, and I got ready to go. My mother was looking nice, and it was time to go pick up Katie, my daughter. So we got in the car, and we started to go down to, down to uh, my father's house, which is not but around the block, and we went to go pick her up. Now, she, of the two things that we bought the other day, which one did you think I thought she was going to be in? The dress. But what was she actually wearing? The cowboy boots. All right, now, let me do an aside here. The two churches that I was going to, I was going to First United Methodist Church of Statesboro, Georgia, and I was going to Oak Grove United Methodist Church of Sylvania, Georgia. Neither one of those two congregations would have cared a hair about what she was wearing. I wouldn't insult them by saying that they would, because they wouldn't. They wouldn't have cared if she'd showed up in SpongeBob footy pajamas. They would not have cared if she wore a swimsuit and a fur coat. And I tell you what, I personally don't care what you wear to church, okay? I don't care if you show up in a pair of Mickey Mouse ears and a gorilla suit. I don't care. Um, but for me and mine, man, we were going to dress up. We were going to dress up because my tradition told me I needed to do that. Now, that's one thing. Now, the other thing is how many young parents do we have out there? I see y'all. And I know that y'all think like I do in that, okay, hey, look, the rules and regulations that we got raised by our parents are not the same rules and regulations our parents apply to the grandchildren. I don't know what happens, but that occurs. <laughs> you know, somehow in the time of those 12 years that my daughter has been on the face of the earth, my father, who would have never, ever, 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 ever let me go to church in cowboy boots and blue jeans, has turned into this person called Pa. And I don't know who this person is, because he's certainly not my father. Now, I found, I found that what happened to that guy named Dad, I became that guy named Dad. And that guy got to become that guy named Pa. And I almost, my daughter got in the car, she didn't know any better. She got in the car, and I almost went in to go talk to my dad, father to father. Now, I realized about, you know, allowing her to go to cowboy boots and blue jeans. She would have never, he would have never let me go to church in cowboy boots and blue jeans. I was in my funeral suit. I was all ready to go. So... I was running late, and I needed to go. So I got my daughter in the car, and we started going down the road. Man, I was getting hot. Whew. Mm. Funeral suit, cowboy boots in the back of my car. Lord, what the heck is going on? How can my father do that? I'm driving there, and I said, Katie? I said, Katie, where's, she, where's your dress? And she said, well, it's in my overnight bag. She's got an overnight bag. There's no hanger, you know, so that thing's all wadded up in the bottom of that overnight bag. I said, well, don't you know, don't you know that you're supposed to... Uh, to be dressed up when we go to church. Don't you know that you should wear your good clothes? And by that time, the Lord had been listening to all this going on, and he came in. Boom! He said, what'd you say, Russ? He said, consider the lilies of the field. They weave nor sow. But Solomon and all his raiment was never arrayed as one of these. And if I can clothe the, the grasses of the field who are here today and tossed in the oven tomorrow, why should you care about what you wear? And I said, Lord, where did that come from, number one? And number two, hey, don't bring that scripture in here now. This is not about scripture. This is about tradition. I am trying to tell my daughter how to dress. I, I got it, Lord. And I thought for a second. I said, well, I said, well uh, I'll just use logic. I'll just use logic. And I said, well, now, Katie, if we were going to see the President of the United States, you would want to be dressed up. And we're going to see the Lord, as if the Lord only lives in church, right? 
we're going to go see the Lord. Wouldn't you want to be dressed up uh, for him? And the Lord said, Russ, wait, 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 wait a minute. I said, well, what, what's, wrong, what's wrong now, Lord? And he said, well, first off, I can't be measured like that. I said, he says, President, he's an earthly king, and I am the creator of heaven and earth. He goes, if we're going to, let's just play your little game here. Let's just use your logic. If I was on earth, what suit of clothes could you possibly have that would be worthy of me? And I said, oh, my funeral suit? No, well, no, probably not. Uh, my dress uniform? No, probably not. I go, I don't know, Lord. He said, if you had a suit made of gold and silver and encrusted in diamonds, wouldn't be good enough for me. If you had a suit made of every earthly treasure on the earth, wouldn't be, wouldn't be worthy of me. So because you can't reach that level, don't be worried about it and don't teach that little girl that. And of course me, now looking from your weeks forward, weeks back, I understand, um, I understand or I appreciate the grace that the Lord has and patience that the Lord has with suffering fools like myself. Because what I did was I said, Lord, I, I hear you, but I'll just talk to you about this. When I get to church, click, and I try to hang up on you. You ever try to hang up on the Lord? That does not work. It does not work. You're sitting there, you're driving comfortably, and the Lord says, I'm not finished with that conversation. I still got a message for you. I'm not done with this conversation at all. We are not finished, young man. And so I went to the church, and I got there like 15 minutes early. Man, I still got some time. My mother, who always wanted to help me out, she's like, Russ, we got 15 minutes. We can get her in, and we can get her changed. Do you want me to do that? I said, yeah, Mom, let's do that. So we got in there, and I got into the church. And no kidding, this is the way the church is laid out. I was in a hallway, Sunday school rooms all the way up on either side. Bathrooms over here on the left-hand side. Mert nursery is at the end of the hallway at the end, and then there's a double door that leads outside of the church. And I'm sitting there, and they're in the bathroom changing. And I'm, I am pacing. I am pacing. And the Lord says, Russ, you're at the church. Time to finish this conversation. And I said, Lord, I, I got it. I know what you're trying to do, but uh, I, I got this thing fixed now. They're, they're changing. I, I don't really need to have this conversation. We got to fix I know what you were trying to tell me, and I can appreciate that. But I just don't need that conversation right now. And the Lord said, he goes, no, we are going to finish that conversation. I said, fine. Fine, Lord. I said, you and I know, both know my tradition. I am wearing my funeral suit. She's in cowboy boots. You know how my daddy raised me. You are supposed to dress up to go to church. No way, no how, no possible under the, under the earth. No way is pe do people come, especially women, do people come to church in cowboy boots and blue jeans. You know that, I know that. As soon as I got that out of my mouth, as soon as I got that out of my mind, door in the hall opened up. Woman, 25 years old, winter coat because it's rainy and wet outside, blue jeans and cowboy boots walks through the door. <laughs> you ever heard the Lord laugh at you? Because he just laughed at me. And I was like, whew, I was hot then. Because I said, all right, I know you're the creator of heaven and earth. I know it. And I know you can make that happen. But here's what I got to say to that. Fluke, 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 fluke. One time, one person, that doesn't, no, 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 I'm not accepting that. Everybody here has heard, everybody here has probably seen the movie Jaws, right? Everybody heard that music? Everybody remember that music? Bona, 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 Okay, just that, that, no orchestration, but female cowboy boots. Coming from the hallway behind me, heading my way. Bump, bump. Bump, 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 turn, girl, cowboy boots, blue jeans. Whew. I had to give up at that point in time. I said, all right, Lord. I pulled out my middle notebook and I said, all right. I said, I heard you the first time. You didn't have to do that. And I wrote down, heavenly father overrides earthly father, cowboy boots and blue jeans allowed in the church. I got it. And the Lord said that. He said, I'm glad that you finally listened. My daughter comes out, she's got on her coral dress, which would typically look pretty nice, but it's all crumpled up because it looks like it's been in the bottom of a hamper. And the Lord says, yeah, that's much better than the cowboy boots and blue jeans. Not that I care. He said, but get your family and go on into the congregation, into the sanctuary, because I have other messages for you today. I said, yes, sir. And I moved on in. So to summarize that then, I would have to say that, you know, as parents, we have to look at all of those traditions that we have. And we have to decide which are the ones that God has given us and which are the ones that our earthly father has given us. 
As a church, we have to look at the ones that we cling to. Are they the ones that have been given and mandated to us by God himself and by the Holy Bible? Or is it something that we've thrown in there that doesn't need to really be there? And it's preventing people from coming and worshiping with us. And it's preventing people from enjoying the message that the Lord has for all of his congregation. Okay. Now that being said, y'all have seen that bulletin. That bulletin has an impromptu men's meeting. All right. So at this time, because if I let y'all go and I do that final song, y'all going to run out of here and go to lunch. And then I'll be left here still, you know, by myself and Terry. So if we can, I would like all the men to come and join us in this room back here so that we can get a little bit of business done. And I will turn it over to the ladies to finish out that last song. Now, my final benediction before I hand it over to Jackie.